Service app connectors are used to connect to an external cloud service, such as Slack and Salesforce, or connect to databases. They typically contain a list of operations, or in other words, third-party API endpoints. All connectors require authentication and the user to specify details in the inputs. To date, there are over 600 pre-built service app connectors in the Tray platform library. But what happens if there isn't a connector for the service you want to use within Tray's library of connectors, or if you wanted to connect to a private API? You can use the HTTP client connector to make single API calls, just like the Postman API platform, save those API calls as snippets, and reuse them. How you build each reusable endpoint in the connector builder is the same as building that endpoint using the HTTP client connector. The big difference or feature extension from HTTP is that you use the connector builder to package these single endpoints into operations and deploy the connector to your entire organization. Consider that the connector builder is an extension of the HTTP client connector. A connector built with connector builder versus HTTP client allows less technical builders to configure steps similar to configuring a pre-built out-of-the-box connector on tray. Both methods have the same goal, make a call to any third-party API endpoint. They require some basic technical knowledge to configure, so it's important to read the tray documentation and the service app API documentation. But which connection method do you choose to use in your integration? Let's take a look at both methods and see the situations where you would use each connector, the value, and any considerations. You may wish to do a specific API call to an endpoint. This means that the HTTP client connector can be used to build your own connection to that endpoint that serves as a single operation by creating a new authentication and passing it in as a parameter. You can pass in additional headers and query parameters that are necessary to make a successful call to the desired endpoint. You will also configure the request body in our properties panel, a flexible interface for configuring inputs. The conventional way to use the HTTP client connector is to manually fill out all the API call information, but you are able to speed up this process with the CURL import feature. If you are able to provide the CURL code for the desired endpoint, this feature auto-populates all the required fields in the HTTP client connector. Overall, this connector is a great option if you are a solo builder, playing with the platform, or testing out a use case. You'll find it's quicker to configure. However, you may find that you've used the HTTP client connector to build multiple endpoints and are reusing those endpoints across many integrations. If this is a common scenario and you would prefer a method that allows you to simplify the configuration process time and again, you may want to use the connector builder. With the connector builder, you have the power to build a connector as user-friendly as possible. It allows non-technical builders to configure the connector even if they are less familiar with configuring direct HTTP endpoints because they'll interact with the connector as if it were a pre-built, out-of-the-box connector in the Tray connector library. You can guide the user on the inputs they'll need to enter into the tooltips and descriptions for each of the operations. It includes dynamic drop-down lists, so workflow builders don't have to hard-code complex IDs. The published connector from the connector builder will look and feel just like a pre-built service connector in our library. Remember when we said that the HTTP client contained a single operation? When you build a connector, you're able to incorporate multiple operations. You can create an operation, test and preview it, then add another operation and keep testing. In fact, you can add as many operations as you like. It means that the workflow builder has to plan their integration and work closely with the person who's building the connector. Once you're done building and testing each operation, the connector is published and added to the connector library. Please note that when you publish, it will take up to 10 minutes to appear in your connector library. Once it's done, it's ready to configure and even share with other members of your organization. You can find links to the documentation in the description below.